Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we shall look at some ideas that you can use in your pen platformer first part to earn bonus points and also to learn more from that activity. Now recall that pen platformer is an activity that we do over two parts. Uh, here we are talking of part one where our main you know, objective is to create all these arenas as we have shown here and also to create movement for the player just enough for it to cross to next levels right so uh, that's all we are talking about today now before we get started with the specific ideas let's recall the basic rules about bonus that well bonus comes after basic you always earn bonus what you can do for bonus is almost endless what earns bonus today may or may not earn you bonus in future bonus is your opportunity to push yourself try out new things amaze everybody however remember rule number one that bonus comes after basic now i remind you these uh, you know rules about bonus all the time but i feel for this particular activity they are even more important reason is because we are doing this in two parts right so the first part is really about making the arena and i think we should really focus on that for now right uh, because pen platformer as an activity is is highly extensible so which means there are lots and lots of variations out there uh, some of them are very complicated and if you start you know, mixing them all together, it gets very, very confusing, right? So for now, stick to the basics, which means get familiar with my blocks, get familiar with how we use them, and the basic idea of pen platformer, which we are using in activity one, where the player moves from level one to level two to level three, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, before I get on to the specific points, once again, remember to add instructions slash description to your project page so that we know what bonus ideas you have tried right that helps us a great deal while marking right uh, now moving on to the pen platformer itself right so uh, well there are a bunch of ideas i can think of the first one is really about the definition of my blocks right now recall that we in the class we did this block where you know we had we could draw lines or draw rectangles uh, but we had to specify the color and say the pen size from outside right but there's no reason that must be the case you can make this a part of your block definition right which means that color and size also become inputs and you know the code becomes a little bit different from that point of view and this is a reasonably good bonus idea right uh, next you can think of more innovative arenas right and what i mean by that is well think beyond rectangles and say sleeping and standing lines uh, i mean think this is slanted lines or say staircases right so you have a staircase going up and then coming down maybe draw triangles right so you can have a my block which draws a triangle or probably a parallelogram or some other interesting shape uh, you know and 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 you can use that to create your arenas in fact you can create some really really nice visually appealing and interesting to play arenas uh, you know which uh, uh, which you can uh, which will be quite interesting right now to aid you here i am putting some links in the description please take a look at this uh, look at those, uh, you know, those games, which are really nice platformer games. However, a word of caution here, we are, like I said, dealing with part number one here, where I'm interested only in creating the arenas, right? So at this point, I wouldn't want you to worry too much about the motion, the gravity and all of that. Uh, that we will cover in a later part, right? So when you look at these projects, look at them from the point of view of their, say, what kind of arenas they have, you know. Uh, what kind of different colors they are using. Maybe I can use some of those ideas, right? Something like that, yeah. Now, you can also think of using like a gate to move to the next level, right? What I mean by that is that, you know, right now our game moves to next level when let's say the player reaches extreme, right? But then you can have a spot or like some kind of a square maybe which the player must touch to move to the next level, right? In fact, one of the examples below in the description has this thing. So you could take a look at that, right? Next, you can, you know, basically create many levels, probably like, you know, eight, nine or whatever, right? Uh, so this kind of goes back to your innovative arenas because you can't keep doing the same arena all the time. It gets quite boring. So you have to think more and, you know, use maybe my blocks in a innovative method to get a lot of levels from your arena. arena. In the class, we did only four, but you could do more than four, right? Uh, next, you could think of some amount of randomness added to the drawing of these arenas, right? So, for example, we can have a situation where, let's say, a level has three obstacles, right? But then the placement and the size of these obstacles is random, right? So, what I mean by that is that every time the player plays the game, something new comes up and that creates excitement, right? So, possibly you have three squares, maybe and you have three, let's say, rectangles as obstacles, probably... Uh, they are placed in a random way, right? Or something like that. Or maybe the size changes every time, right? Uh, in fact, extending this idea and probably, you know, 
adding on to some of the other things that we have said that you can make the levels appear completely randomly right now this is a little bit tricky uh, because this will require you to use lists right so what i mean here is that uh, your game may start at level one right but thereafter there's no compulsion that goes only to level two or level three because notice here levels are not really uh, necessarily in the increasing order of difficulty they're just different arenas different backgrounds that we are creating different kind of obstacles we are creating right so we can have a situation where maybe the game starts at level one but thereafter maybe it goes to level five and then comes to level three and then level two and so on and so forth till all the levels have been reached right now what that does is that it makes the game quite interesting quite exciting because you know the player cannot guess what's coming up next right he has to always be uh, you know kind of be alert right uh, now to help you with this i'm i've done a sample project with a lot of comments Please take a look at that. I'm putting the link in the description. Uh, in fact, that project also does a little bit of randomness to drawing of the arenas, right? So, uh, you know, uh, I think it will be quite useful, right? Now, before we wrap up this video, like I always do, let's see all of this in context of the game that we developed in the class, right? So notice this game is very simple. We have this one player which moves around and, you know, as it moves, these arenas keep coming up. Uh, there are four levels. And, you know, that's about it, right? Now, like I said, the first thing you can think of is this definition of these my blocks, right? So we are using for the creator sprite, you know, we are using uh, these my blocks called draw line and draw rectangle, right? Now, if I go here, for example, these draw line and draw rectangle are only doing the drawing part, right? They're not doing, for example, the choice of color or something like that, right? So, you know, very well, we could do uh, a function which also takes input as a color and the pen size, right? So that will... Uh, I think that's a reasonable thing you could do. Of course, what that means is that wherever you're calling this function, you have to pass those inputs as uh, from outside, right? Uh, next, you can think of more innovative arenas, right? So notice our our game here is basically just using rectangles, right? Uh, and and you'll see rectangles and obstacles or as steps or maybe, you know, in some combination. But then you can do more, right? You can probably, let's say, think of making some kind of slanting lines, right? So maybe you have a line which goes like this and then it falls onto a platform, right? Or you can think of creating some kind of gaps between platform or you can even think of creating some colors which are probably bad for the player, right? So the one, one way to look at this is that, you know, the player is eventually going to move on all these things. It must avoid certain things. It must touch certain things, right? So you can have a good color, a bad color, and then you can use many combinations of those, right? Like I said, uh, look at some of the videos in the, uh, some of the games in the description. Uh, get ideas from them with respect to the arena, right? Do not worry too much about the motion, the gravity and all of that because that can get quite confusing. Uh, we will look at that in lesson number two, in part number two of this video, right? Uh, next, I also talked about creating a gate for moving to the next level, right? Notice in our game, right, the way you move to next level is basically you end up crossing this entire thing and then you go to the next level, right? But what you could have possibly is that, let's say, on every level, you have, say, a square maybe somewhere here, right? So, you know, right now you can just put it here. Later on, when we add jump and all that, you can put it somewhere else, right? But basically, you put something here. Whenever the player touches that, it goes to the next level, right? So that's, I think, a nice, uh, you know, uh, nice uh, addition to this. Uh, try not to use a sprite for that because, you know, then it kind of beats the purpose. In fact, you should just try using this draw rectangle function to make something here, which looks like a completely filled, uh, you know, gate. Uh, you can play with the pen, pen thickness uh, to, say, get that effect. Again, there's a project in the description to uh, to kind of guide you for that, right? Uh, then I spoke about creating several levels, right? Now, our game here ends at four levels because, you know, that's all we have done. So level one, level two, level three, and level four, right? But then there's no restriction that the game should have only four levels. In fact, one of the things with this pen is that you can extend this. So you can have maybe five, six, seven levels. I mean, don't have to go like hundreds of them, but probably like seven or eight levels is kind of common in the games that I've seen in Scratch, right? So you could try something like that, right? Uh, next, I spoke about creating some kind of randomness added to the drawings, right? So what I mean by that is that let's say take, take our game, right? So when we go from level one to level two, notice that these obstacle rectangles are always coming at this point, right? And that's because over here in the creator sprite, when we get, you know, for example, when I get level two, so when I, when I receive level two, uh, the broadcast called level two, then I basically go and place these rectangles exactly at wherever they are. 
of the same height of the same width right now that need not be the case right i can in fact use variables and random numbers to maybe move these guys let's say this way or possibly even up and down or i can even think of making them a little bit thicker right like a little bit wider or taller right now the good thing with that approach is that every time you do this every time somebody plays the game something else happens right and that makes the excitement alive and for our point of view it's good programming practice right because you got to have to change these things you still have to make sure that these two don't appear on each other and so on and so forth so you have to uh, you know do these things kind of a uh, little bit carefully but that's a great experience i think that's a great uh, idea i feel right uh, in a similar line taking this whole thing forward you can think of a game where these levels do not even appear in an order right so for now right now level 1 goes to level 2 uh, then it goes to level 3 right and then it goes to level 4 right and after a while it gets quite predictable because you know what's coming up right but imagine a game where you know uh, your levels for example probably after level 1 i go into maybe level 3 right or maybe i go into level 4 and then come back to level 2 right so i can have a game which is much more lively where the levels change in a sort of random order right and to do that you know i have to use a list uh, you know uh, and keep track of which levels i have gone to and keep updating that list basically keep deleting that so it's a little bit more work uh, but there's a description there's a project that i'm putting in the description uh, where i've implemented that with a lot of comments please take a look at that and i hope that will be useful for you right so with that uh, i hope you know this video gave you some idea of what you can do to make your game interesting to you know uh, kind of learn more from this and like i said this is only the part 1 part 2 is where the player starts to move and the excitement just multiplies right so uh, i think overall this is a very interesting game to learn my blocks and that's why we are teaching you this right uh, take care bye bye thank you so much